from the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. In SciTech Today, we're getting a preview of a new device that could emerge within the next decade that could make life easier for millions of people with type 1 diabetes. It's called the artificial pancreas. Nanotechnology correspondent Alex Fiorentino joins us live from the Museum of Science in Boston. Alex, why would somebody need an artificial pancreas? Well, Chad, unfortunately, millions or, or many of the 23 million Americans who suffer from diabetes need to prick their skin several times a day with something like this and then squeeze out a drop of blood and put it on a blood sugar monitor like this. And so if this shows that their blood sugar is too high, they then need to inject themselves with insulin to bring that level back down. So what does this artificial pancreas look like? Um, so I, I will, I'll show you in just a second, but I want to tell you a little bit more about type 1 diabetes. And so people with type 1 diabetes are actually lacking a special kind of cell in the pancreas called islet cells. Um, and so these islet cells normally act as blood testers. They sense the level of blood, of, of blood sugar in the body, and they react if that level gets too high and release insulin. Um, so people with diabetes, with type 1 diabetes, are actually missing these islet cells from their pancreas because their own immune systems have destroyed them. And so, specifically, uh, scientists have tried to solve this problem by implanting islet cells into people with diabetes. Um, but those, those attempts have basically failed because those people's immune systems just continue to attack and destroy the islet cells. I see. So, so, so that's sort of what brings us around to this research by Dr. Desai and her team of bioengineers at uh, UC San Francisco. And so what they've been working on is an artificial pancreas that could use nanotechnology to sort of protect those islet cell implants. All right, so how would the, where, 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 how does this work? It's implanted, and what does it look like? Yeah, that, uh, so, so the example I have here is actually a, a sample that Dr. Desai was kind enough to send to me. Um, and so it's, it's this little capsule, and it could be implanted into the arm of a person with diabetes or into their stomach cap, uh, cavity, excuse me. Um, and from there, it could replace the function of those missing islet cells. Uh, and so to, to show a little more in detail how this works, we have an animation uh, that we put together here at the Museum of Science. Here, we see the implanted capsule. The researchers have placed a colony of healthy, living islet cells inside. Sugar molecules flow in through tiny nanopores in the capsule. But larger immune cells are too big. They are blocked out of the capsule and cannot attack the islet cells inside. Safe inside the capsule, the islet cells perform their normal job. They sense the amount of sugar in the blood and release insulin as blood sugar levels rise. The insulin can then flow out through the nanopores and lower blood sugar to a healthy level. That's fascinating. The capsule protects the islet cells, allows them to function normally. How far along are they in testing this new device? Uh, well, so at this stage, what they're really doing is still improving the device and testing it out in animals like, like rats. But what they'll, what they'll be doing next is applying for permission to test it out in actual human diabetic patients. So this is why we're saying that this technology could be as much as a decade away, but if it, if it really does make it, it could completely improve the life, the quality of life for millions of people with diabetes. All right, Alex Fiorentino, thanks very much for joining us live from the Museum of Science, Boston. Thanks for having me, Chad. Remember to join us every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 and every Thursday morning at 9.30 for the latest developments from the Museum of Science and Technology in SciTech Today.